to analyze a graph to help you solve a problem. It says a 2 kilogram ball moving in the positive direction at 3 meters per second is acted on by the impulse shown in the graph below. What is the ball speed at 4 seconds? So first let's look at the graph and see what it's telling us before we try and solve the problem. We've got force on the y-axis, we've got time on the x-axis, and if we look at the graph we can see that for the first second there's no net force acting. And between t equals 1 second and t equals 2 seconds, in other words for the second second, the force increases from 0 to 10 meters. And then in the third second, the force decreases back down to 0, and in that last second there's no force acting whatsoever. And this is what time we're worrying about. Um, we want to find the speed at that time. So let's see. Um, we're looking for the final speed. That's one thing we're given, or that's what we're looking for. Uh, we're given the initial speed, that's unknown, and that's 30 meters per second. And we're given the mass, which is 2 kilograms. Now, there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can use things like um, net force and kinematic equations, but given that we're kind of being hinted to it about impulse, let's try and see if we can use impulse. Impulse is change in momentum, and it's also force times time. And so that's probably what we're going to look at for this problem, since we're given some info about force and some info about time. The trouble is it's not a constant force, and it's a little unobvious what to do about the time as well. That force increases and then it decreases. So one thing you could do is you could chunk the problem into pieces. Oh, no force there. Not much to worry about. A force that changes here. You could maybe look at the average force. That force goes from 0 to 10, so the average during that second is 5 newtons of force. During this second, it goes from 10 back to 0, so the average is 5 newtons of force. And during this second, there's no force. That's one option. But the other option is to look at it and go, wait a minute, I'm looking for the product of something on my y-axis times something that's plot on my x-axis. And anytime you're looking for the product of a y-axis and x-axis, you're really looking for the area underneath that shape. So in this case, this area right here, that area is the area underneath a force times time graph. And so that actually is the force times time, or the impulse. And in this case, it's a triangle shape, so we can solve for the impulse just using the triangle equation. Area is a half times base times height. The base really only goes for from t equals 1 to t equals 3, so 2 seconds. The height from 0 to 10 is 10. And so we've got the area, which stands for the impulse, as 10. And then once you solve the impulse, then it should be easier to say, okay, the impulse, that's another word for change momentum. And the momentum changes by 10. I know, in other words, this. And I'm looking for some information at the end of the problem. And we know that change in momentum is final minus initial momentum. So we kind of work our way back to figuring out about the ending situation. We know how much momentum changes by. We don't know what the momentum at the end. We can really figure out the momentum at the beginning because it's just momentum is mass times velocity. And if I use the beginning velocity, I'll figure out the beginning momentum. But the beginning momentum is 2 times 3 is positive 6. So we have a beginning momentum of 6. In other words, we have a something that starts momentum of 6 and changes by 10. So at the end then, if I solve for this, momentum must be 16. Starting at 6, changing by 10 gives me a final momentum of 16. And then there's one step away from saying, okay, well then, what velocity does that correspond to? If I know the momentum and the mass, I can solve for the velocity. I just need to use the momentum at the end to solve for the velocity at the end. In other words, I can say I know the momentum at the end. 